We glorify you, Father God. We glorify you, Father God. My God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We glorify you, Lord God. We glorify you, Lord God. My God, I thank you. My God, I bless you. My God, I glorify you. My God, we magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. 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 Father God, we glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. We thank you, Father God. We bless you, Daddy God. We magnify you, Father. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. For he is good. He is good. He is good. He is worthy to be praised. He is good. He is good. He is good. He is worthy to be praised. My God, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. We bless your name, Daddy God. We praise your name, Daddy God. We glorify you, God. We glorify you, God. Greater is he that is in Lakeisha than he that is in the world. We thank you, Father God, that you have made us more than conquerors. We thank you, Daddy God, that you are the great I am. We thank you, Daddy God, that you are the Prince of Peace. My God, we thank you, Daddy God. God, that you are Jehovah Gabor, the one that goes to war for us. My God, we bless you. My God, we praise you. We thank you, Father God, for being the good shepherd. We thank you, Father God, for being the great I am. We thank you, Father God, that you are the God that goes before us. We thank you, Daddy God, that you are our rear guard. We thank you, Father God, for a fresh anointing, one that destroys the yokes of bondage and sickness and disease. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. He is the great I am. My God, I thank you. My God, I bless you. My God, I praise you. My God, I glorify you. I lift up the name of Jesus. I lift up the name of Jesus. I lift up the name of Jesus. My God, I smell a victory. My God, I feel a victory. Saying you are defeated and under our feet. You have no authority over our present circumstance. Lord, we are glorifying you because we fight for a, from a place of victory. We thank you for sweet rest. We thank you for sweet peace. We thank you, Holy Spirit, and we welcome you and say, come, come into our presence, come into our homes, come on to this devotional today. We thank you, Lord God. We glorify you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, that you are tearing down strongholds, tearing down wicked imaginations, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. Anything that exalts itself against you, Father God, we're pulling that down now, right now in the name of Jesus. We are not giving the enemy any voice today. He has no authority right now in the name of Jesus. We're pulling down the strongholds right now. We're pulling down the wicked imaginations right now, and we receive your grace for this day, and we receive your love for this day, and we receive your truth for this day, and we thank you Lord God, that we walk in your glory. We thank you, Lord God, that we walk in your glory and we put on the helmet of salvation today, Lord God, for we know, Lord God, 
that you have already saved us. And we thank you for the breastplate of righteousness, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, that our loins are girded with truth today, Lord God, of what your word says. We thank you, Father God, that our feet, Father God, are with the gospel of peace, Lord God. We will not give over to mischief. We will not give over to anxiety. We will not give over to worry. We will not be defeated, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the Lord. And we we pray in the spirit on all occasions, Lord God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. Father, we thank you for your heart towards us. My God, I thank you for your heart towards us, Lord God. We thank you that there may be many of the afflicted, but we the righteous, Lord God. We stand in truth. We stand in love. We stand in joy. We drive out all bad self-esteem. We thank you, Lord God, that we see ourselves, Father God, how you see us. Sober up. We thank you. We are sobering up, Lord God. We will not be given over to drunkenness. We will not be given over to temptation. We will not be given over to things that do not align with your word. We thank you, Father God. We fight from a place of victory for Jesus was already wounded for our transgressions. He was already bruised for our iniquities and chastised for our peace. We trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lean not into our own understanding. In all our ways, Daddy God, we're acknowledging you. So, Father God, we ask you, please direct our path and please direct our day. Say we're not even giving you any of voice today. We're not even giving you any authority. We shut your voice down. You cannot speak to us about our circumstances. You cannot speak to us. As a matter of fact, we're mute to you. In the name of Jesus, we are deaf to you. you. We cannot hear you, Father God. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We are sensitive to you. We thank you, Lord God, that we are keen in our understanding and keen in our discernment, Father God. We thank you. We are able to overcome every strong hold, Lord God, through Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We are washed in the blood. My God, made whole and brand new, Lord God. And we only see ourselves as you see us. We cast every other memory into the sea of forgetfulness. And we thank you, Father God, for who we are in Christ Jesus. And we declare victory in our home and victory on our jobs and victory throughout our day. Pray, Holy Spirit, pray. Pray through us, Lord God. We pray through us, Holy Spirit. Be with us, Holy Spirit. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. Be pleasing to you, O oh Lord. We choose you, Daddy God, above everything else. We choose to serve you. We choose to wor worship you, Lord God. We we will not give over into anxiety. We will not give over into fear. We will not give over to worry. Father God, I thank you. Every debt is demolished. Father God, we owe sin nothing. We owe no man nothing but to love us. My God, we are not going to pay the penalties of our, our past, Father God. Advance, daughter. Father God, walk into the fullness. My God, let your daughters arise. Let your sons arise and walk into the fullness of who you call them to be in Christ Jesus. For you said in your word, Daddy God, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Call them to soar. Cause them to soar. Cause them to soar. Let everything that they put their hands to prosper today, Daddy. God. Let multiplication and increase be upon their life, Lord God. Let it be evident, Father God, today that they are a child of God. Let them walk into the fullness of their righteousness, Lord God. Understanding that you are God. Understanding that you are God. My God, let them be anxious for nothing. Let them wait on you, Daddy God. Let them wait on you, Daddy God. My God, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. For your word, your son, the Holy Spirit makes us more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors in you in Christ Jesus. My God, I thank you. You're eradicating sin. You've eradicated our past and we will not live according to that. Let us trust you, Daddy God, like never, ever, ever before. 
My God, let us take our rest in you. Let us gather our truth in you. My God, in the name, I am really praying for your self-esteem this morning. Like I am praying that you see yourself the way God sees you. I drive out every force of darkness that has left you in this state, my God, to walk in a less than value of yourself. My God, where you don't take care of yourself, where you're not conscious of your weight, um, where you're not owning who God says you are. My God, I thank you. You are not addicted to anything but Jesus. I drive out the spirit of addiction that you're not even addicted to your past. Sometimes we can be so addicted to our story. We can be so addicted to our past that we'll stay right there in the past because we we so used to telling what happened and we so used to we so used to fighting from this place of not victory. I am believing God that right now in the name of Jesus that there is an image being pressed in your heart of who God says you are, that you understand that he foreknew you and that you come up a level. And I'm not talking about because see this world will define you and you'll start doing the things that the world tells you been there, did that. You'll start doing the things that the world tells you successful. You'll start doing the things that the world tell, tells you is sexy. You'll start doing the things that the world qualifies you. And if you think that the world qualifies you, you'll never own what God says about you. You'll never think you're worthy of the business. You'll never think you're, you're worthy. You won't take care of yourself. You're going to let your, your hair be any kind. Like you just won't own yourself. You won't own what God is saying about you. You'll play yourself down. You won't receive. You can't even receive the promotion because you don't think that you're worthy of the promotion. You can't even receive the husband because you don't even think that you're worthy of the husband. You can't even receive and walk into the fullness of the, pro the, the promotion because you don't think you deserve the promotion, but God says you deserve the promotion. So I decree and declare today that God just begins to give you a view of yourself so you can come out of this darkness so you can come out of this complacency that your self-esteem will drive you right back to the same place your your lack of understanding of who God says you are my God your ability to not be able to see what God says about you and then we feel we build up like a false see the enemy is tricky. He'll have you build up a false confidence in a particular thing. Like he'll have you build up a false confidence in your degree or he'll have you fill up a build up a false confidence in your Facebook likes or he'll have you build up a false con confidence in who's telling you this on Instagram. You don't need a confidence in nothing but Christ Jesus. Like you don't need, I destroy the yokes of bondage that has left you in that. I destroy that off your life. I cancel that assignment. You need to get a mental view. You need to get a hard view. You need to get this word in you about who God says I am. You need to know that. That is the only reason you keep back paddling. That's the only reason you won't accept and walk into the fullness. You won't walk into your wealthy place. And when I mean wealthy place, I'm not talking about your finances. I'm talking about your optimum health. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the beauty of who you are. Um, and can I tell you something? And then when trends and cycles come in, those trends and cycles will begin to define you. Those are the trends and cycles that will define you. So can I just be real? So then when the natural movement comes in and it starts saying to you, oh, be your best natural self, right? And then I'm all for you being your best natural self, but I'm not all for you being your best natural self if you're trying to hide in that. So then you don't comb your hair. So then you don't grease your face. So then you don't take care of yourself. You don't even consult the Lord and ask the Lord if this is for you. You don't even consult the Lord and ask the Lord, is this your look? And you're like, God is concerned about that. Yeah, he's concerned about that because he created you. He cre like he created you. He formed you. He foreknew you, right? And so you play into a movement because it lets you play yourself down. It 
lets you, you play yourself down. And I don't care if it's your natural, Sarah. I don't care if it's wigs. I don't care if it's weave. I don't care what it is. Nothing else should define you but God. You have got to begin to see yourself as God sees you because that confidence, that confidence that's inside of you will transform you into his image and then it will be able then then the the favor and stuff come can i tell you something you're not going to be able to walk into the fullness of what god called you to be when you're not in your authenticity of who you are when you're not people will be drawn to your authenticity and you've got to be careful about people who are drawn to your success or people who are drawn to your likes or people who are drawn to what they fear. See, some people are just, a, come on now, some people just attach themselves to you for where they think you're going, right? And so come on, Colossians 3 and 3, let us, on, in, only in Christ, like only in Christ, only in Christ shall we see ourselves. Only in Christ shall we be defined. And so I'm just believing today is the day that you get a mental revelation and, and a heart revelation um, for who you are. For you die and your life is now hidden in Christ God. That's three. You got to get a revelation. You got to give a revelation of what God says or you'll play into anything or you'll not walk into the beauty of who he called you to be in Christ Jesus. I am almost six feet and people are like, why do you wear heels? I wear heels heels because I like to wear heels and because it's good for me and I like this like God showed me an image of me so when I wear heels it has nothing to do with my height it has nothing to do with anything else this is my image this is how God designed me this is how God created me so I'm going to wear heels so little things like the little things you got to know who you are in Christ Jesus but that also comes remember we're learning God as the good shepherd right? We're learning God as the good shepherd. We're letting God lead us. We're understanding how intentional God is, us, is with us, right? So we Lord to say, love to say, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want, right? Well, if the Lord is your shepherd and shall not want, we know he has to begin to lead you and he has to begin to guide you, but you are not going to be able to do this by a life by the flesh. You are going to have to do this by a life by the spirit. What does this look like for me to live a life by the spirit. I want to give you a few scriptures this morning. What does it look like? What does it look like when I'm like, I'm like by the spirit. And can I tell you something? Can I just give you this, this sis? Can I give you this bro? Can I just give you some wisdom as you evolve in Christ Jesus? Do you know everything about you will begin to change as you grow. Your heart changes first, right? Your insides changes change first. And then as you begin to morph, God will begin to tell you the more intimate things about yourself. He's concerned about everything that's, that's in you. There's a look to you. You were not designed to be a carbon copy. You were designed to walk in the uniqueness of who God says you are. Well, that comes from me having a life hidden in Christ. I tell people all the time, right? When I'm coaching them, you really don't know who you are until you figured out who you are in Christ. You do not know who you are until you think like until you are living a submitted life to Christ. You don't know because once you transform, God will begin to reveal and show you things about you that you didn't even know that you didn't even know existed. He will begin to show you a healthy healed and whole version of yourself. A lot of times we operate in stuff that is not the healthy, healed and whole version of yourself. Correct. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are made in his image, but we are not carbon copies. We are to made in the image of Christ and everything else. And then can I tell you something? A lot of you are designed specific to your assignment. So if you don't really understand your assignment, if you don't really understand your purpose, then the way you operate, you operate outside the assignment. And so then you attach yourself and you also attract things that have nothing to do with your real assignment because you don't know your assignment. You have to know your assignment and who you are in Christ Jesus. When you know those two things, then you will not attach yourself, nor will you attract things to you that do not belong to you. Because greater is he 
that is in me than he that is in the world. And then this is the next part of this. Then God carves out the assignment, not you. You don't carve out this assignment. You don't carve this out. God carves the assignment out. You get the assignment. You submit the assignment back to Christ. I don't know why I'm going in this direction. You submit the assignment back to Christ. Once you submit the assignment back to Christ, it is the responsibility, John 14 and 26, it's the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to work out the rest in you. It's the responsibility of God to work out the assignment. He has to work out the things in your heart first. That's why the scripture says with perseverance, right? Comes endurance, right? With perseverance comes endurance. With perseverance comes endurance and patience. This morning, as I was praying for the devotional and praying for us, I was sitting and I was thanking God. And this is what I began to thank him for. This is Romans 5, 5, and I'll start at the third. It says, not only that, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which whom he has given us. So this morning, I thanked the Lord. I said, Lord, I thank you for teaching me perseverance and endurance while I'm waiting on you, while there are some things that have yet to be answered yet. There are some doors that have not been answered yet. So instead of me whining and complaining about the doors that have not been opened, I begin to thank him for teaching me perseverance. Thank you for teaching me endurance. Thank you for teaching me character. Thank you for preparing me for my next place. I had, can I be honest with you? I had never prayed that before. Like I had never prayed Thank you. I had not yet realized all the things that he's teaching me when I'm waiting and stuff hasn't manifested yet. I made a decision. I made a decision. I'm not going to complain on these things. I'm going to thank you for the things that you're teaching me while this is not yet manifest. That's a prayer of maturity, which is also what God desires to do to bring you to your most mature place so that you can walk in your assignment, not immature, <laughs> not from an immature place. Um, because when you walk in a, your assignment from a mature place, it looks different. You won't spend no time on nobody hating on you. You won't spend, can I tell you that? You will not spend any time on anybody hating on you. And one of the reasons you'll not spend any time on anybody hating on you is because you'll recognize Psalms 37 and 1. The Lord tells us clearly, fret not thyself unto evildoers, neither be envious of the workers of iniquities. My grandmother taught me that scripture when I was a little girl. Do not be worried about people who are hating on you. Do not be worried about people who speak against you because the more that you spend time worrying about that, the more you're going to attract that to you. This is a release for somebody today. This is a peace for somebody today. The more that you spend time on what they said and what I don't care what you say about me. What is God saying about me? What is God saying to me? What is God saying about my process? Are, is God and I good? Like is God and I good? I don't even have tish time to acknowledge a hater. I don't even have time to give five minutes of energy to a hater. As a matter of fact, ignore what they said. Because they don't determine your final outcome. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans that I have for Lakeisha. I know the plans I have for DeShannon. I know the plans that I have for Cheryl. I know the plans that I have for freedom. Because here's what happened. If you find yourself in a position where you're paying attention to what other people are saying or what haters are saying, you'll gravitate your energy towards that. You don't have time to act, gravitate your energy towards that. You need to be producing. Whatever we focus on is what we draw to us. Whatever we focus on is what we draw to us. So God, what has God said about me? What has God said about this situation? God, are you and I good? And if we are good, then God develop me so that I can walk out this assignment. So I can walk out. That's what it looks like to be shepherded in purpose. That's what it looks like to be shepherded in a place. That's what it looks like for living. So let me give you these scriptures. And then we're going to get off of here. I love, I know why the enemy fought me this morning, but today he gets no, he gets none of this. He gets no victory. He gets no say in this devotional, right? And so you got to know the plans. Lord, what are your plans for me? 
And then you got to be quiet long enough to hear them because it can be very difficult for you and you can skew your perspective to this world standards of success. I lived it. I know it. I lived it for a long time. I had my own game plan and God was saying to me multiple times, I need you to come up a level. I need you to see things from my perspective. I don't need you to focus on anybody external. I need you to focus on me because actually when we fulfill our assignment and walk in a purpose, we're really supposed to be hidden in him. It is not us. It is not us that does the purpose. It is not. When we hide ourselves in him, he does all the rest, right? Psalms 46 and 1, right? What does Psalms 46 and 1 tells us, right? So we need, we need to remember that. We need to remember what the word is saying to us, right? Hide yourself. God is our refuge. God is our strength. He is ever present in our tr- trouble, right? We will not fear. So God is our present help. So we we hide in that. We rest in that. And that becomes our truth. So I'm not going to spend time on energy. So here's the thing. We've got to learn how to live life by the spirit. If we're going to be led by the good shepherd, we have to live life by the spirit. The reason why we need to live life by the spirit is that's because how that's how our discernment is going to grow. So I'm going to read this to you at the message form of the Bible. This is like, this is Galatians 5. I'm going to start at the 19th verse. It says, it is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, come on, Lord, Jesus. This, this is the, this is when it says it's obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your way all, all the time. If I'm going to let you be the good shepherd, if I'm really going to let you lead my life, then I cannot afford to be in a situation in which, which I'm trying to get my own way out of life. I've got to trust Lord God, that you know the very best for me, that you know the plans and I've got to submit my plans to you daily. And I've got to submit my plans. It says it's obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way. Remember James, I think it's James, what, four and six. It says, why do we argue? We argue because we want to get our own way. That's, that's what James says. James says, why am I, why are y'all arguing? Why are y'all fussing? Why are y'all doing all this? You're arguing because you want to get your own way, right? James 4, read the whole chapter of James 4. You know what that chapter talks to you about? Worldliness. The whole chapter talks to you about worldliness. And it might not be the same. He said, oh, it's not the sixth verse, but he says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So he says, it's obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way. So go read James 4 when you have time on worldliness, right? And ask yourself, is my life aligning up to anything in James 4. So it says, it's obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. It becomes repetitive. This is just the Bible. This is not me. It's repetitive. It's loveless. It's cheap sex. It's... See yourself in this. Remember when we read the word that God speaks to us through the word. Just see yourself in this. It, it, when you get out of your way, it's repetitive, it's loveless, it's cheap sex, it's a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage. Some of y'all about to get free today. It's frenzied and joyless. It grabs for happiness. It has idols or trinket gods. It has other gods. It has magic show religion. It has paranoid loneliness. It has cutthroat competition. It has all consuming yet never satisfied wants. It has a brutal temper. It has impotence to love or to be loved. My God can't receive love, can't produce love. My God, it divides homes and divided lives. It's small minded and lopsided pursuits. It's the vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival. It takes everybody and makes them a hater. It takes everybody and makes them a rival. It's uncontrolled. It's uncontrollable addictions and got no control and got no self-control, right? It's ugly parodies of community. 
Come on. When we talk about what a pair, what is an ugly parody of community? You know, I don't like giving y'all nothing and you don't understand what it means. It's ugly parodies of community. This is just a word. So, a, so, so a parody is where we imitate community, but we're not really community. And then he says, I could go on. He says, this isn't the first time I've warned you. You know, if you use your freedom this way, you will not inherit God's kingdom. <laughs> but what happens when we live God's way, he brings gifts into our lives much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity we develop a willingness to stick with things a sense of compassion in the heart and conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people we find ourselves involved in loyal commitments not needing to force our way in life able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. This is just the word. This is not Lakeisha. It says legalism is helpless in bringing this about. It only gets in the way. Among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting our own way and mindlessly responding to what everyone else cause necessities is killed off for good and crucified right so if i crucify the christ then i'm not living the way i tell people all the time if it's popular it's probably not jesus it's probably not Jesus. This is Galatians 5. This is Galatians 5. This is the 19th verse. This is a message Bible. If everybody's doing it, it's probably not Jesus. If everybody's thinking that way, it's probably not Jesus. It's probably not Jesus because his path is very narrow. His path is very narrow. If everybody, if it's very popular, you better begin to ask if it's Jesus because if it's consumingly popular, it's probably not Jesus. <laughs> it's probably not Jesus. It says, since this is the kind of life we have chosen, this life of the spirit lets us make sure that we do not just hold on. Come on, y'all. It is an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts. We're not just holding on. We're just not posting it. That's not what we're doing. No, this lets us know that we're going to work out its implications in every details of our lives. That means we will not compare ourselves with each other as if one of us were better and another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each of us is an original. That's the word of God. <laughs> I, that's only, I only read to you the word of God this morning. Can I just go back to this one little part and then we're going to pray and get out of here. It says, it is obvious what kind of life develops. This is a life that's not by the spirit. This is Galatians 5. Out of trying to get your way on way all the time. Your life will be repetitive. Your life will be loveless, cheap sex, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage, frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness, grabbing at things that will never bring you happiness, trinket gods, having all kinds of other idols, right? Magic show religion, right? Remember, I always tell you guys, it is not magic. God is not magic. That's not how we live. Um, paranoid loneliness. My God, do we need to define paranoid? Let me give you a definition for paranoid. For all of us that have ever been paranoid, when we say paranoid, we're talking about um, um, being suspicious, being overwhelmed, being consumed, never being at peace, being extremely fearful, being very accusatory, an accumulation of mental, emotional frenzy, joyless, magic show, paranoid, cutthroat competition, always in competition with somebody else. All consuming, yet never satisfied wants. Consuming you, going after it, you get it.
Believe God, get the house, still ain't satisfied. Now I need a car. Get the car, still ain't satisfied. Now I need a bigger house. My God, still ain't satisfied. God called you to be on the prayer team. You ain't satisfied with the prayer team. You're going to go take off and preach. God gives you a promotion. You start complaining about the promotion. Never satisfied. A brutal temper, angry, mad, popping off, and impotence to love or be loved. Let's define impotence. And then we're going to get out of here. I want to define impotence for us. I don't want us to be in a position or a place where we don't understand what we're saying, right? So if we're talking about impotent, right? Or being impotent, what we're saying is we're not producing. We don't have the ability to receive love. We don't have the ability to walk in love. It's a weakness. We're weak in love. We're dysfunctional, right? Divided homes, divided lives, small-minded and lopsided pursuits, not pursuing the things of God, and vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, making everybody a competition, everybody is a rival, everybody is against you. Uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions and ugly parodies of community, looking like community, but not really community. We got to chew on this today. That, that's it. That's enough to chew on. My God, in the name of Jesus, I repent. If there is anything of this that has been in me, I'm sorry, Lord God. That is not a life by the Spirit. But a life by the Spirit brings gifts, brings fruit, brings affection, brings exuberance, brings serenity. My God. And can I tell you something? We'll be believing other, we'll be blaming other people. For stuff that's happening in our lives when it's really been because we've been living by the flesh and not by the spirit. And we will charge other people and we will forever charge other people. Everybody else is the problem. Everybody else is the blame. We will take no accountability and we'll think the devil is against us and everybody else against us. But the reason really why what's producing in our lives is producing is because we are not living life by the spirit. That's it. I love y'all. That, that's it. So your homework assignment, I'm going to read it when we shut down. I'm going to, I can't read it to y'all now or we'll go over. We're going to read James the fourth chapter and what, and learn what God says about, um, worldliness, right? James four. Can I, can I give, can y'all give me just two minutes? Yes. Where do you think all of these appalling worlds and quarrels come from? Do you think they happen? Think again, they come about because you want your own way and fight for it deep inside yourselves. You lust for what you don't have and are willing to kill to get it. You want what isn't yours and will risk violence to get you to do whatever it is to take to get what you want. You wouldn't think of just asking God for it, would you? And why not? Because you know you'd be asking for what you have no right to. You're spoiled children, each one in your own way. You're cheating on God. If all you want is your own way, flirting with the world every chance you get, you end up enemies of God and his way. And do you suppose God doesn't care? The proverb has it that he, he's a fiercely, fiercely jealous lover. And what he gives in love is far better than anything else you'll find. It's common knowledge that God does goes against the willful proud. God gives grace to the willing humble. So let God work his will in you. Let God works work his will in you. Yell a loud no to the devil and watch him make himself scarce. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he gonna flee. Say a quiet yes to God and he'll be there in no time. Quit that's 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 shepherding, that's leadership, right? He said, um, he said, no time, quit dabbling in sin, purify your inner life, quit playing the field. Hit bottom and cry your eyes out. The fun and games are over. Get serious. Get really serious. Get down on your knees before the master. It's the only way you'll get on your feet. My God, this is just the word of God. This ain't Lakeisha. This is nothing else. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. I'm not, I'm just reading. It says, don't, this is what I said. Get serious, really serious. Get down on your knees before the master. It's the only way you're going to get on your feet. Don't bad mouth each other. Friends, it's God's word, his message, his royal rule. Stop bad mouthing each other. That takes a beating in that kind of talk. You're supposed to be honoring the message, not 
writing, my God, you're supposed to be not right. You're supposed to be honoring the message, not writing graffiti all over it. God's, God is in charge of deciding human destiny. Who do you think you are to meddle in the destiny of others? And now I have a word for you who brashly announced today at the latest tomorrow, we're off to such and such city for the year. We're we're going to start a business and make a lot of money. You don't know the first thing about tomorrow. You're nothing but a wisp of fog, catching a brief bit of sun before disappearing. Instead, make it a habit to say, if the master wills it and we're still alive, we'll do this or that. As it is, you are full of your grandiose selves. All such vaunting, self-importance is evil. In fact, if you know the right thing to do and don't do it, that for you is evil. I don't know about you, but when the Holy Spirit brings me to a place in which he's bringing this type of scripture to me, that means I need to do some searching. That means I need to focus on Lakeisha, not who this applies to. I need to focus on Lakeisha, so that I can make sure that I'm living the life by the spirit that produces fruit and that I am being properly led by the good shepherd. That is why, can I say that now, Holy Spirit? Yes, that is why the Lord, that is why the enemy fought this word today because he didn't want you to get this revelation. That is why he fought it. That is why he fought this word today. I understand now what the fight was before in the beginning. So, Father God, we thank you for teaching us to persevere. We thank you, Father God, for good reception on this devotional. We thank you for this word today. We will study ourselves to show ourselves approved. So, Father, that you, it is evident that you are the good shepherd in our life, and we will not walk in anything else. We will not be wise in our own eyes. We will not leave into our own understanding. We thank you, Father God, for this word. That is not, this word is not that he's talking to me. He's talking to you. This word is, yes, Julia, for self-examination, not for nobody else. This is not for you to take this and try to thought, thought, take this and put this on somebody else. Now you need this word for yourself so that you can win a life by the spirit. And for those of us that teach the word of God, we're held more accountable. And I said that, and that's scriptural. Go look that up in Timothy. For those of us that teach the word of God, we're held to a higher standard and we're held to a different accountability. So Father God, thank you for opening the eyes of our understanding to the hope of who you called us to be in Christ Jesus. And if I were you, I would go ahead and read James 5 as well. I will read, I will read, I will read James five as well. Father God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you. You are piercing our hearts that we come up another level, that we come to another standard, that we hold ourselves accountable in the word. And if you want to hold yourself accountable in the word, that was James four. Mm -hmm. I just read James four and then James five as well. And if you want to hold yourself accountable in the word, the first step to doing that is through Christ Jesus, that you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and savior. That you just make the decision. You know what? Today, I ain't been right. Father God, I'm going to accept you. <laughs> Jesus, I need you to come in my life. I'm a sinner. I am in need of a savior. I'm acknowledging that you died on the cross for my sins. I'm asking you to come in my life. And Holy Spirit, I'm going to need your help. If you just prayed that prayer, if you'll do me a favor and you will... Um, you will um, contact us at info at justbeinglmj.com. I would love to send you some resources and materials. My God, I thank you for your word this morning. Yep, we got to come up another level and we cannot make another excuse of why we can't come up. We got to live the word. We got to act the word out. We ask the Holy Spirit for help the more we read the word. Now do me another favor. <laughs> if this word has blessed you and Father God leads you, go so a seat into the ministry. Log on to the website, LakeishaMJohnson.com. Plant your seed there. Dollar sign LMJ Ministry is Cash App. Plant your seed there. You know when you plant your seed here in this ministry, that more fruit is going to abound to your account. May God supply all your needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. My God, double the double on their lives today, Father. Let them experience you more than ever before. You say giving it should be given unto you. Press down, shake together, run it over. The same measure we give it out is the same measure it's going to come back. So I thank you, Father God, for your power, for your restorative power in your word. And we receive this by grace. I love y'all so much. More than anything, God loves you. We got a greater work to do. We want more fruit to abound in our account. We want to walk in the fullness of our purpose. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading this thing. I'll see y'all back here tomorrow, 5 a.m.
I mean, him. Bring somebody in. Don't get this word and go run off. That's how the devil loves. The de this is not for you to take a heavy. This is not for you to feel bad. This is for you to be like, you know what, God? Do a greater work in me. Can we just say that? Father God, do a greater work in us. Open the eyes of our understanding. Give us ears to hear, Lord God. Let this word be so planted deep in our heart that we will run with it and we will run for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all. I love you so much. But more than anything, God loves you. God loves you. He would not have given you this word if he didn't love you. He is not going to leave you in just any state. He is not going to leave you in just any place. That is not the kind of God we love and serve. So do me a favor. Go be loved today. Be a blessing to someone else. Go do something for someone else. Go, go show love to someone else. And I'll see you in the morning at 5 a.m. Love. Come up a level. I hear that in my spirit. Come up a level. Come up a level. It's time for you to come up a level and not make another excuse. Come up a level. Give them permission to do the greater work and come up a level and not make another excuse. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace. My God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.